Hey everyone, welcome back to Williamson Ridge Outdoors. Today, we are taking a look at our Easton Made 916. This machine we have had two years as of last weekend. We actually picked this up two years ago at the Paul Bunyan Show in Cambridge, Ohio. That show just happened last week. I actually am really disappointed I didn't get to make it to the show this year uh, due to just work conflict and that kind of stuff. Uh, so, you know, I was really kind of disappointed that I didn't get to make it there and go through and see all the vendors and see all the machines and all the equipment and everything that they have there. But that's okay. Hopefully next year everything will be back on track and I'll be able to make it there. So anyways, we're going to be talking about this Easton Made 916 and let's get into it right now. First, let's go through all the things that I really like about this machine. So first of all, this log lift right here is a back saver. And I've actually done some videos on this lift lifting some very big rounds of red oak. In fact, I mean like 450 pound chunks of wood and it has no problems lifting that stuff up. The only problem that you have is once you get it up here, you know, and you split it, then you're gonna have those pieces falling away. So just be, you know, cautious of that kind of stuff if, if you ever work with material that large because one of those big halves can get away from you or a big quarter even. You just have to watch that kind of stuff because even though this thing's capable of lifting that up there, you also have to kind of determine where the safe point is or where you feel safe handling those big chunks of wood. But there's been nothing that this thing could not lift or even that it acted like it was straining to lift up. It just it just picks it up no problems whatsoever. So the next thing is actually this big hydraulic oil tank. This thing is 25 gallons. And even though this model does not have an oil cooler on it, for my personal use, you know, I don't use it eight hours a day. You know, in, in fact, the longest period of time I've probably used this was about three hours or maybe four. But even in that period of time, my oil temperature has only gotten to about 120 degrees. I had a residential splitter before and that thing, the, the hydraulic cylinder would get hot in just a couple hours because it would get hot enough to where if you put your hand on it, that you, you know, you'd have to take your hand back off pretty quick. So that big tank really keeps the temperatures down. And I would say that if you were using this eight hours a day, then you might want to consider going to, you know, one that has an oil cooler or something like that. So this particular machine has the Honda GX340 engine on it. This thing has been flawless. It is typical Honda uh, quality, what you would expect out of a Honda engine. Uh, nine times out of 10, it'll start on the first pull. Eastermade has gone to the Briggs Vanguard series, which is their commercial line of engines now. I wouldn't have any reservations about getting one with that engine on it, simply because of the, the quality of these machines. I know that Andrew would not jeopardize their quality and go with some inferior product but anyways like i say this one does have the gx340 on it which i'm i'm very happy with it and it hasn't given me any trouble whatsoever so another thing i really like about it is this push plate this thing is huge most machines don't have a push plate this big and what that really does as you're pushing through your wedge it keeps those pieces from trying to flip up and it it continues to push you know even uneven pieces or whatever it'll push it through and not slip over the top or not come loose from it and if you notice on this plate there's actually some bumps on here some raised places that you'd be surprised at how much traction that gives this plate i've had stuff that i thought sure was going to slip because it was maybe cut at an angle a little bit or something and it it dig right into those and it just push it right on through and have no problems but look at the sheer size of this thing a lot of times on video you know, you have a hard time of actually seeing how, how large something is. This push plate is 17 inches tall, which really works out because your wedge actually raises up to about 17 inches also. So it's a pretty good matchup. So another awesome thing about this machine is actually the wedge itself and the way that it goes in. Now, I'm going to do this from up here on top of the machine just because it's easier for me to pick up that way. You can actually remove this tray right here and slide it out to get it out of your way to be able to get to this wedge a little bit easier. But I find that actually the six or the, the four or six way, uh, instead of trying to reach it over top of this stuff, I just get up here and stand on the tray. It's plenty strong enough to support 
your weight and then you can just pick up your wedge and pull it straight up and it's out. But all you have to do is actually lower it down all the way first and that unlocks the mechanism that holds it in and it's free. You just slide it right out. You slide the other one in. You just line it up. Slide it right back down in there and it's locked in, ready to go. Uh, the Galtech valves on this thing are awesome. They are smooth and they are as smooth now as what they were two years ago whenever I first got the machine. There's not a, you know, a bunch of slop and play in them. Your auto retract, still a good positive lock in. Everything is just super refined feeling. It's just really good. So to the list of things that have torn up, broken, uh, or had issues with, that's, that's really a short list. The only thing on this machine, actually there's two things. The main one is actually the wedge itself right here on this four way. The only thing that I've had, if you notice here on the edges, it's actually bent a little bit right out here on the edge. That's not really a big deal to me. I actually take a hammer sometimes and I'll, I'll kind of hit it from the bottom or whichever side it's bent and I'll flatten that back out. You know, I actually kind of chalk this up to my fault because I had some knotty pieces and instead of, you know, backing the, the ram back off and trying to straighten it out, I just kept pushing it through there and that big knotty piece I could turn up and split through there sideways and really was doing something that I really shouldn't have done. And I've done it a few times and it seems like that, you know, you, you think in your mind that you don't do stuff like that. But when you're in the middle of splitting, you're like, oh, it'll power through it. And it does power through it. But in this particular case, you know, I bent that edge a little bit right there. And I have actually done it on both sides. But you can see how that's kind of bent down there a little bit. And like I say, sometimes I'll take a hammer and I'll just hit on that a little bit and it'll bend back up. And like over here, it's actually arched up just a little bit. And I can take a hammer and drive that back down flat. And it'll usually stay until I hit another big knotty piece of wood and try to drive it through it sideways. So I definitely don't recommend doing that. I still have no trouble with it running the pieces through. Uh, so it, it really, it hasn't bothered me at all that that happened. And like I say, I just, I know that when I done it, you know, I was like, ah, oh, why'd you do that? You know, so anyways, that kind of stuff happens. So the only other thing that I've actually had was right here on the lift. There's a bolt right here and this has got a bushing in here. And sometimes this actually works its way loose a little bit and you have to come over here with a, a socket or a wrench or whatever and tighten it back down to pull this arm back over. And as you can see, it's actually loose right now a little bit. This will only be the second time in two years that I've had to tighten this up. So it's not like that it loosens up all the time. It's a very short list of things that have gone wrong or things that I've had to adjust, I guess, or tighten up or whatever on this machine. That's only two things, that wedge, and then, you know, having to, to just keep an eye on that to make sure it doesn't back off all the way or come loose. There are a few things after owning this machine for a couple years that I find myself wishing that I would have got. The machine itself is great. I absolutely love the machine. It's more than any homeowner would ever need as far as, you know, what what does a homeowner need, you know, versus what a commercial user would use. For me, I'm looking at it like, you know, I'm a homeowner using this, trying to split firewood efficiently. But if I want to sell some firewood, then I have a machine that I can, can that I can just keep running. I can split plenty of firewood, I can sell it, and I don't have to worry about wearing out the machine. But those things that I would change or add to this machine, number one, the auto cycle function. I would love to have the full auto cycle function on this thing. That way I could basically just shuttle firewood back and forth. The machine would be splitting while I'm going to get another piece of wood and it's not something you have to stand there and hold the controls. Now for a residential owner, then, I mean, you don't need that, but it's something that I would love to have just because I do firewood by myself 99% of the time. The other thing I would actually, I'd like to have a box wedge, but I, I'd want one that was more for the boiler wood, you know, like, I think Eastermate actually does two versions. They do one that has uh, a smaller version of it to cut up more like campfire size wood. And then they have a larger version. I believe it does five inch pieces, but the box wedge would be so much easier to handle those great big rounds that I've run into a lot of times. So once you get the round up there with a box wedge, you can just keep running it back and forth 
and keep splitting pieces off of it and you don't have to worry about like the wedge and the piece splitting apart and falling off the sides and you having to support that weight. So pretty much aside from that, that's really the only things that I would change about this. And maybe maybe add the oil cooler on it, but that's that's not something that I really would need, but it's just one of those features that, you know, you think like, well, if I end up splitting a lot of wood later, then maybe I might need that and, and maybe I would go ahead and get it on there. But all in all, I am extremely happy with this machine. Couldn't be happier, really. I mean, there's the build quality, the durability. I don't have any actual complaints about it. Just be some of those features that I might change uh, if I if I was doing it again. One more thing I forgot to mention, this thing actually has wear components in the push plate. So you've got a slider basically in, in or you got a couple sliders sandwiched in between some brass and stuff and it's all bolted together. So that as this thing wears out, you can actually replace those components and it'll be just like new again. And it never wears the actual push plate. It just wears those wear components. So you can replace those and have your push plate and everything right back to new. Well, the crazy thing is, like I say, I've had this for two years and I can't even see wear on those components yet. I would have thought that the wear plates themselves, I'd start to see them kind of getting thinner. I really can't see that right now. So I'm very pleased with that, knowing that this machine's gonna last for years to come. It has really served its purpose. It does a wonderful job. So that's gonna wrap it up for today's video. It actually ran a lot longer than what I really meant for it to. I didn't really wanna leave out any details or anything on there. If I did, feel free to leave questions, comments down below. I'll try to get back with you as quick as I can. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to hit that thumbs up button. It really goes a long way in getting this video out there and helping the YouTube algorithms and all that stuff. Also, while you're at it, subscribe to the channel and follow along with us for all the things we got going on around the property. And thanks for watching.